We decided we would mark this year with several events. We had many say to us as we started the consolidation process, how will you preserve the rich history of these two great institutions? Last summer, we celebrated with the West Kentucky Vocational School alumni with a luncheon and the unveiling of Dr. D.H. Anderson's portrait in the lobby of the building, which he was named, or which is named after him. This past week or so, we celebrated in the library with the digital archiving of so many of the memories of this college. We have gathered historical documents from both colleges. We have them in the library for your research in the future. We have also put display cabinets in the lobby area, in the circular center of the library, Madison Learning Center that displays the historical memorabilia of our college's history and also display cases for new events that will happen with faculty and staff, new celebrations that will be in our future. And then, of course, Janet Blythe's book, Upward Stride. I saw many of you purchasing a book tonight and Janet autographing. What she has done has been a wonderful work to put together the histories of the colleges and to bring us up to tonight's day of celebration. So thank you, Janet, and congratulations. <laughs> but tonight, or today, we want to recognize the faculty and the staff. They had a vision of what a comprehensive community college would mean to this community. And they have worked so very hard to make it happen. And tonight also, we want to clearly set the path for the future. We want also to recognize this community for the support that it has given us and the resources that have been available to us have allowed this college to provide unique opportunities that aren't available in many, many other parts of this country. That we have a unique opportunity to provide an outstanding education to this region. So to bring us greetings from the Paducah Junior College Foundation is Ms. Ann Gwynn, Chair. So welcome to the podium, Ms. Gwynn. We as a community 
enjoy the fruits of your labors, and we appreciate what you do. We celebrate with you. Um, this college and this community have long enjoyed a symbiotic relationship. One of the unique uh, aspects of this particular institution uh, is the financial support that it receives through its foundation, Duke the Junior College. I have the privilege this year of, of chairing the board, and I can tell you that it is comprised of citizens who not only value higher education, but truly appreciate and understand how intrinsic it is to the quality of life in our community. Most of us these days are bright enough to know that jobs and education go hand in hand, and that the economic health of a community is directly correlated with its uh, educational opportunities. So when what you do on this campus resonates with your larger community, you're going to see some results. And your first supporters in the community are going to vote with their dollars. In the past five years, the dollars have resonated with the campus. Private dollars gifted to this campus in the last five years are $6,000 shy of seven million dollars. So we didn't already have enough reason to celebrate. We have 6.94 million more. And support in the private sector has been matched by support in the public sector. I uh, appreciate the uh, elected officials that have, have joined the community and the faculty and staff here today because we can't do it without you and we're going to make lots of uh, more uh, requests in the future to be more warned. <laughs> Emerging Tech is the first state-funded uh, building that we've had since 1980 on this campus. And if you add to that the public-private partnership funds that have been earmarked for the UK research wing, uh, that's $18.5 million in new campus infrastructure, or $18.5 million more reasons to celebrate. And finally, uh, one, one final thing to mention to celebrate today is Janet Bly's wonderful, marvelous history, Upward Fail, Upward, upward Stride, which chronicles the accomplishments of uh, the forerunners of this college. It couldn't be more timely. You take two wonderful institutions uh, that started with West Kentucky Industrial College and then followed by the Paducah uh, Junior College, and those are the underpinnings for the institution that we're celebrating today. It's a love story. I think it's a love story between the citizens of, of this region and the aspirations that they have for the community that they love. It's been that way for a long time. And while this campus may be larger and more diverse and more comprehensive than it was five years ago, the spirit that infuses the campus and the community has really remained unchanged throughout all these years. Janet takes her, the title of her book from a quote by the Reverend J.E. Underwood as he addressed the faculty and students of Paducah Junior College on the first day of class on September 12, 1932. And the Reverend says, the ringing challenges of tomorrow are the real values. Let us continue upward stride. Well, Reverend Underwood, before you can stride upward, you must strive upward. And I would match the strivings and the stridings of this college uh, with any college. Anyway, congratulations for a job. Very, very well done. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, we'll have another five years to celebrate in another five years as we strive onward and stride upward. Thank you all. Mayor Bill Paxton and the city of Paducah have been some of our strongest advocates and partners as we've gone forward over these past five years in new ventures. And we welcome you to the podium, Mayor Paxton, and thank you for the support that you've given us over this past five years. Thank you all very much. It's uh, an honor for me to be here, and I am here 
basically to congratulate the faculty and the staff and the administration for a great community and technical college. One that I think is the best community and technical college in the country. And I mean that. Now, like Ann said, five years ago, you rolled up your sleeves, you put your personal agendas behind you, and you combined the community and the technical college and made it what it is today. Now that is quite a feat. And I think a lot of us can learn by that. Because our personal agendas do not mean a whole lot when we can do something greater by combining forces. Now the city and the county and the college have been partners for a long time. Dr. Beasy is one of the people that I most respect in this entire city and county. She has been a true partner and she has made a lot of what is happening in Paducah possible. Through with that one, you're going to build another. 
and another one. And it helps revive an inner city neighborhood that was in need of that. Another way that this college is partnering with the city. Several years ago, Wayne Sterling, director of Greater Paducah Economic Development, said in a, in a meeting that if we did not have a school to train our workforce, we were never going to be successful at attracting industry. Well, guess what? Dr. Beasley heard that, and she said, you're right. And we can do something about that. So she went out, and she met with Dr. McCall. She raised money, and we're getting ready, and it broke the ground in a building, a technical building, technology center, and a UK engineering and research center right here on this campus. What is that going to do? That's going to help us train our workforce. It's going to help us go out and say, industry, you'll come to Paducah. We've got the best facility in the country to train that workforce. It's a win-win situation. Not only are we doing that, but Dr. Beasley's leadership and Ken Wheeler's leadership, we needed to make a decision on what kind of curriculum are we going to offer? How are we going to use that building? So they went out and attracted Basil Drosos, a bright young man that's come back to Paducah to retire, and uh, Lynn King from Lourdes Hospital, and they've got a group of people that is as talented as any I've ever seen that are going to come up with the best way to use that facility, and we're going to be better off for it because of that. So there are ways that this school in this community, and when I say community, I'm talking about the city and I'm talking about the county. It's a joint effort. They've worked together to make our quality of life the best it can be. And by because of that quality of life, this is going to be a better community, it's going to be a better college, and we're all going to be better off. So it's my pleasure to stand here tonight and to say to you faculty, you staff, to you administration, great job, keep up the good work, and let's go to the next level. Thank you all very much. Judge Van Dubery met with me very early in his tenure uh, as the county judge executive, and we talked at length about the economic impact that this college has on this community, not only in attracting new and retaining business, but also in what we as 250 plus employees contribute to this community. So, Judge Newberry, we look forward to your remarks. Thank you, Dr. Beasy for inviting me here to uh, your five-year celebration of the West Kentucky Community and Technical College. One of my main concerns as county judge is the economic vitality of this community. But all of my efforts to improve the economic health of this area pale in comparison to what this school does for our area in this realm of economic development. I'm not just talking about the huge impact that Dr. Beasy just talked about, that the institution has is one of our largest employers. But what the faculty and staff mean to the thousands of people who attend here, the person here who obtains an associate degree will typically earn a quarter of a million dollars more in their lifetime than a worker with just a high school diploma. Multiply that by the thousands of graduates that this school has turned out and will turn out, and you add billions and billions of dollars to our local economy. And who should get the lion's share of credit for this? I'm going to step away from Dr. Beasley a little bit. Faculty and staff. <laughs> Management may steer the boat, but the faculty and the staff, they row the boat. They don't get much credit, and they do the hard day-to-day -day work 
that keeps the place running and working for our area citizens. When I think back to my college days, some 30 some odd years ago, I don't remember those who ran the college, no offense Dr. Weinberry, since I'm a graduate of his college, College of Engineering at the University of Kentucky. What I do remember though are the faculty and staff people that had what I call the three magic qualities. First of all, I met people that had a good obvious work ethic. They worked hard and they expected me to work hard. Secondly, they knew their subject, our business, and they could teach anyone, even me, a politician. And thirdly, and probably most important, is they cared about me and they wanted me to su succeed. And I sensed that, I picked up on that. You know, they encouraged me and they helped me get my degree. West Kentucky Community and Technical College is blessed with having many faculty and staff that possess those three magic qualities. And I don't say that from a position of ignorance. My wife has worked here for many years, and she knows a lot of the faculty and staff, and she talks a lot about the people here that have those magic qualities. And that is the main reason, I believe, those magic qualities, why this school is successful, and why we are here today celebrating your success. Thank you for having me here, and congratulations. Dean for International and Commonwealth Programs, and I have worked together for over 10 years. And we jointly worked on the University of Kentucky College of Engineering program here. Our most recent venture has been the research wing added to our, the Fred Paxton Engineering Wing, added to our emerging tech world. And I thank him for his time coming down here from Lexington, and we appreciate our partnership and look forward to many more. So, GT. I would like to extend uh, the greetings to the faculty, staff, and administrators of the University of Kentucky. And I um, uh, know that President Lee Todd, Colonel Supaswamy, Tom Lester would love to be here, but I understand that they're trying to find a way to uh, navigate a $12.7 million potential budget cut. So I must leave immediately after this presentation <laughs> and come to get to this. Uh, now our association at the University of Kentucky College of Engineering goes back many, many years uh, with, uh, I'm still going to say the PCC, I know this is probably chastised me for it later. Uh, but uh, I would like to recount, if I, I can, just a very few instances where you've been just so impressed with the work of this community. And I will say that in those Howard Hall and at Lexington, we go around speaking with one another about the uh, pride that this community has and their ability to get things done. And uh, I hear over and over again, never underestimate the newcomer. So, so when uh, my dean was contacted about the third month of his tenure as dean, he had been dean now 18 years, he was asked to come out here and uh, meet with a, a group of uh, economic development folks and business leaders about the possibility of expanding our engineering <coughs> offerings in Western Kentucky. The talk around campus was, well, that would be just a day to go to Paducah and have a good time and go home, but boy, this, uh, this, these people out here had a plan and it included engineering in Paducah. And so uh, Crowns Hall, as it uh, first the CJC Science and Engineering Building, later named Crowns Hall, was built largely with private funds. And I recall bringing over with me one afternoon a uh, professor of mechanical engineering in the UK that had been in the UK some 35 years at the time, took him through the building and he, his jaw dropped. And uh, he sat outside, he stood outside and looked up at the building and I said, Harry, what do you think? He says, well, GT, there's only one thing wrong with the building. It's not in Lexington. <laughs> slowly but surely, we've uh, won the faculty over to the way of thinking that you can never underestimate the building. <laughs> I recall when we uh, were recruiting faculty for our position here about 97, 98, and the faculty and the 
administration in the UK were wondering if we wanted to be able to attract quality faculty to our programs here. But I can tell you that there were ample, ample housing opportunities, cultural opportunities, recreational facilities. Uh, there was a vibrant economic climate. There were uh, diversity of religious opportunities. So we had no problem at all in recruiting and retaining a quality faculty for the program. When we came out here in the late 90s and there was talk about the Challenger Learning Center, kept us busy and abounded on May 10th to get the community pull off such an activity. You know, you, you, you're witness to it now to the fact that you, you have this wonderful facility that will impact this region for decades to come. Uh, as recently as 2003, President Todd made a trip out here to visit. I knew it was going to be a problem because he sat down with students and the students gave him an earful about something we needed to do out here and that was to have a unified tuition plan. Up until that point we were attending to some of the other not unimportant details about getting the programs accredited, but we had not yet solved the issue of students receiving multiple bills, uh, having multiple drop, drop dates and that sort of thing. But with the uh, commitment of the uh, faculty and staff here, largely at the uh, uh, Community and Technical College, we were able to solve that, and now the students receive a single uh, bill for their uh, tuition. We wish it were more, but it's, it's, uh, at least you know, it's a single bill. And so that when there was talk about the uh, engineering research wing, uh, never underestimate Paducah, and we knew it was going to be a fact sooner or later. It was only about six months, I think, Tom Lester and I made the trip out here, and we had dinner with Ken Wheeler and with the president of Eden. And I can remember distinctly as I was sitting there. Well, actually, I thought about a four hour, 18 minute drive from Lexington. I don't know exactly how long it is. Right? And uh, Tom and I joked on the way out. We were wondering, you know, not what we were going to eat, you know, like we were wondering what you're going to do next. And we know once it's in your mind, it's and I know that uh, my dean and the, my chancellor, my provost, and president would like to, for me to congratulate you on this accomplishment and to just uh, congratulate you for many, many things you've done. In fact, back in the early 90s, I started compiling a Paducah Polytechnic chronology. It's my own book. Okay, it's not quite sophisticated, but I've got this from volume one of six, and it goes through the year 2000. I'm going to leave it with President Beasley to share with her staff because it contains all of the uh, uh, newspaper articles that uh, were in the uh, local uh, papers you know, during the time we were establishing the engineering program back here. I don't know what the volumes of 2010 and 2011 and on will be, but I can, I can guarantee you that it will be something phenomenal in the offering with this type of commitment and this type of leadership and with the commitment of the faculty and staff of this fine, uh, uh, this, this fine institution. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gwynn, Mayor Paxton, Judge Newberry, and Dr. Lineberry for your wonderful remarks. We certainly appreciate your continued friendship and support of our college. When we consolidated, we saw many challenges, but we dreamed of the college we wanted to become, and it is amazing what we have achieved. The consolidation of Paducah Community College and West Kentucky Technical College allowed us to eliminate duplication and create a one-stop service atmosphere for our students and our campus. The money saved through consolidation allowed us to renovate Anderson Technical Building and made that one-stop center possible. As a college offering transfer and a full complement of technical programs, we have been able to obtain competitive grant funding that has targeted student scholarships, equipment, and technological advances. We have added more than 20 associate degrees and certificate programs 
and we have brought international students to our campus. None of this, however, would have been possible without the strong partnerships we have forged. A solid platform is now in place for us to confidently go into the future. Our vision is to strengthen the relationship with our area high schools and make going to college a reality for every high school senior. We are off to a great start with the Commonwealth Middle College. We want to see a pathway for every high school senior that will allow them to take college credit in any area and take that college credit forward to a four-year university when they desire to do so. We want to expand our transfer center and make recruiting from a four-year university happen every day on this campus. Our vision is to quickly offer at a high quality level any program that is needed to retain a business or to attract a new business to our community. The Emerging Technology Center and the University of Kentucky College of Engineering in existence and with the new Fred Paxton Engineering Wing, that sets the foundation in place for us to do so. I read yesterday these words, Kentucky is a small, poor, and rural state. Jobs are hard to come by, even when not in financial tough times. When we vision for the future and continue to dream about what education will mean to this community, those words are not heard. That is not the Kentucky we know that we can be. The Kentucky that we see will be strong, industrious, highly educated state with high paying jobs and financial stability. This college, with your support, will help this community achieve that dream. I thank each of you. I thank, I thank each of you every single day for the opportunity that I have to be the president of this college. And I know that you join me in the pride that I feel for this college. And though we've made remarkable achievements and accomplishments, as our award-winning television department will show you, it really is just the beginning. Colleges Unite, Paducah Community College and West Kentucky Technical College are now one college, and it's just the beginning. is the last graduating class of Paducah Community College and West Kentucky Technical College and the beginning of a new educational era. I have been blessed to work in higher education and to be a part of a college that changed lives. West Kentucky Technical College, Paducah Community College. Two fine institutions, now one great college. Community college should change my whole life. We are changing lives. Two fine institutions, now one great college. Where will you go to college?
Because I was trying to pick them. Clean them. College helps people that help themselves, and that's the kind of people we need in our friendship program. Where will you go to college? 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 Higher education begins here. help you develop a plan to get an associate degree that is convenient for you. What are you waiting for? If you're ever in Dr. Pruitt's class and you don't know what to guess, guess B. He seems to like that better than C. If you're in Dr. Garrett's class, read the book. If you're in Dr. Wurkiller's class, don't be afraid to laugh at his jokes. They're just so excited about what they're teaching. And I think that speaks volume for this campus. They just really, they really love what they do and in turn that makes us love being a student and in their class. That's that's a great reason to be here at West Kentucky.